This is the world that we are living in now. How can we change it? Is this the world that we want to leave behind? Can hydrogen be the solution? You have to have three things to make an industry revolution. One is the communication, energy, and then the mobility. So in the first industry revolution, there was printing and newspapers. The energy was coal, and the mobility was a steam engine. And the second industry revolution was with telephone, radio, and television. The energy was oil, and the, the transportation media was the vehicles with internal combustion engine. Now we are ready for third industry revolution because we have renewable energy, solar, wind, and we have 5G internet, IoT, new communication system, and now we have powertrain like fuel cell and battery. We are in the situation of beginning of third revolution and everything will change. This industry revolution comes once in 100 years. The mobility industry is having its revolution right now. Gas cars are a thing of the past, but the implementation of new technologies costs money, a lot of money. One question we always hear is, is hydrogen a viable business solution? We know in Germany that state regulation is still favoring fossil fuels. But here in Switzerland, the even big corporations and big companies are switching to hydrogen. We show you how they do it and that they're making money with it. Luzern lays in the middle of Switzerland, surrounded by beautiful mountains and, of course, the Lake Luzern. It also holds the Swiss Museum of Transport, where all kinds of mobility technologies from the last decades are presented. A perfect surrounding for a very special event. The largest grocery store companies in Switzerland got together in a private, not state-supported effort to bring hydrogen trucks on the road. Here, the first batch of hydrogen-powered trucks were handed over to their new owners. The hydrogen future of Switzerland is not driven by the state. It's powered by the engagement of companies who want to prove that hydrogen can replace the usual diesel truck. You know, we speak of Europe, Germany, preparing plans and programs for the future at the government level. But I think Switzerland is already doing it on a complete private level and it worked extremely well. The whole starting point was this, um, this um, association basically, where they, and, and you heard it today, I mean, they brought companies together which are really seriously in competition. But they said, we want to establish a, a hydrogen ecosystem and we have to do that together because if everyone does it by himself, it's never ever going to happen, right? Because the whole infrastructure needs to come with that. That's an expensive piece of the puzzle. So it's not worth it doing it for one truck or two trucks. Das war für uns auch die Bedingung eigentlich quasi immer ans Projekt und ich also Bedingung das war auch die Bedingung des Projekt des des Fördervereins. It was a condition for us that the vehicle could be used to its full potential in daily operation. Without problems and without obstacles. What is it about Switzerland that makes it so favorable for hydrogen? Is it the fact that there is so much running water that as a natural resource Switzerland is able to make a lot of green hydrogen? Or is it the fact that they had a lot of foresight and were able to implement a lot of rules and regulations that made hydrogen technology very favorable? I think one of the most asked questions, why does it work in Switzerland and not in other European countries? It will in the future, by the way. But anyhow, um, I think the Swiss business case is special because um, there's, there's a road tax which was established about 20 years ago and um, you're, you do not have to pay this road tax if you're running an emission-free truck. We're talking about quite some significant money here. We're talking about 60,000 euros roundabout per year per truck. And since we're not 
selling the vehicles, we're utilizing a pay-per-use model. That means that in this fee per kilometer, everything is included. I mean, from service and after sales and spare part availability, insurance and so forth, but also the hydrogen itself. So we're really going down to the cost per kilometer. And we can factor in that this tax is not to be paid so that the cost per kilometer is the same. And then another advantage beside this road tax um, exemption is, is higher diesel costs in Switzerland compared to other European countries. So the benchmark we need to meet is higher than in, let's say, Germany or so. So Switzerland has moved towards green hydrogen with out government subsidies and I think that this is a really important thing to kind of emphasize that it can happen without direct government support. Yeah, the problem is to make the new technology as efficient as the old one. I mean the old one has like 150 years time to get this cost efficient. We worked on it for, for such a long time. So now we have to do the same with new technology which takes time of course. So in order to move societies to green technologies businesses need to stop polluting and to do that they need the incentive that it's too expensive to do business the way they have been in the past and a CO2 tax is a great step in that direction. Absolutely. So with our battery vehicles, sure, we save some CO2 of the inner city people, but those are the people that don't drive very much. So their mileage per year is very limited. If you want to make a difference for CO2 emissions, you have to replace the part of traffic that goes hundreds and hundreds of thousands of miles per year. And that are the trucks, the heavier cars, maybe small airplanes, trains, all these other applications for which batteries do not hold enough energy. And exactly for those applications, hydrogen is perfect. It will not help if we do it in only in Germany or in Europe. The best way would, would be, let's say, the level of G20. So the major countries uh, on, the, on the planet which uh, need to agree on a, on a CO2 price for the whole planet so that uh, it doesn't matter where you are producing, for example, fertilizers, you have to pay the same CO2 price and then uh, everybody yeah, has the same price level to reach when it comes to their products. The regulatory framework to enable business models for green hydrogen, one of the key measures is um, uh, to impose a price on CO2. This is the key to almost everything. Because running a truck on fossil fuels is still too cheap. As our experts pointed out, we need to introduce a price on CO2 emissions. Because burning fossil fuels has secondary costs, which means in the end we have to make fossil fuels more expensive. As we have seen here in Switzerland, there is a viable business case for hydrogen. Hydrogen trucks can transport goods as cheap and quick as other trucks. So is this also a solution for passenger cars? The passenger car side and the commercial vehicle side, they, they both need each other. Because, as you said, it's, it's easier to emotionally connect with passenger car segment and the design and, and so forth and also the volume is much higher on passenger car side so scalability I think comes from the passenger car side let's say for fuel cell systems right from a scalability perspective we need the passenger cars as well to bring down the price but when you look at the infrastructure as I explained earlier it's easier to build up the infrastructure if you're going for vehicle segments which with a much higher hydrogen consumption and that's truck and bus. So now we have developed the technologies far so far that we can easily use it in the passenger cars and we can use it in the trucks and ships and maybe in some day when we have a more power density we can even use it in the aircraft. 
hydrogen and fuel cells make perfect sense for cars and trucks. And as we've seen here in Switzerland, there's a viable business model without government support. Yeah, I mean, the shift in mobility will not happen without battery or hydrogen. It just depends on which kind of technology you want to use in which kind of circumstances. But I think this is important to know that in the logistics sector, you won't have a greener solution without hydrogen. I think that for long haul and distances, hydrogen really has the correct energy efficiency and density to really handle this sector. Yeah. But I have burning questions, Don. Will hydrogen work to power our cities? Will it work to heat our homes? And what about emerging countries? Exactly. And all these questions will be answered in our next episode of the Hydrogen Discovery Series. Be sure to check the next episode of our Hydrogen Discovery series where we are showing to you how important hydrogen already is in emerging countries.